So questions from uh, the audience. Uh, my name's Heidi. I'm from uh, the Student Association at UConn Post and we look after the Illinois and the Warwick campuses as well. You spoke a lot about the university sector and how um, during the ranking of the university sector and how that works. You didn't speak about the polytech sector. Now, I know for myself the polytech sector with uh, the courses that we do, because we've got such a variety, if students start on a one level one but don't move on to the second or the third level, it's classified as a fail. So that unfairly um, puts you cold in a bad position and what, uh, marks all the other politics as well. So how are we going to be looking at rectifying that so that people are not being unfairly tarnished? So you're talking about the organisation getting a reputation that it doesn't deserve? Well, I think what we need to do is just look at the, the kind of bigger picture and start with the, the principles of what we're trying to achieve. So what we're trying to achieve is have a, a tertiary education system that is providing a high level of quality and that we're continuing to put the focus back on the tertiary institutions for delivering that higher quality. So when you as a, as a student sign up for a course, you know that there is some uh, skin in the game, if you like, for the institution uh, that you are paying for your qualification. So we've introduced it with the, with the universities. Um, there's some work being done um, around the other parts of the tertiary sector. Um, and it's, there's, four different, there's four different measures that have been introduced, um, which I want to go through because I'm not sure if everyone's um, aware of what they are. Uh, and, and I think the important <coughs> thing to note is it's not just about bums on seats. So it takes into this performance-linked funding takes into account qualifi qualification completion rate, <coughs> course completion rate, retention and progression, uh, which I think it's, it's important that we measure all of those things um, and also over time increase those sorts of measures so you as a student could look at it and say, well, students who participate in this particular course, this number have gone on to get to do further study in that area, higher levels of study, um, or this number have gone on to work in this particular field. So I have to say, for those of you who are already part way through your study, um, you may not see the benefits of that. Um, but for those who are coming into the tertiary education system in the future, it will give you way better information in terms of you making choices about what you want to study, where you want to study, what level is best suited for you. And I think one of the components of that is, and it's an area that really concerns me, is, you know, I don't, I don't want to have constituents who come into the office to see me with this massive, massive student loan who haven't got a job and who in reality have no, I shouldn't say that, no, no, no hope in hell of getting a job in that area that would pay enough for them to be able to pay off the level of student loan that they've managed to rack up. So that's, that's you know, part of where we want to go so that you can choose a course, know where that's going to take you in the future, what sort of job that's going to get you, what sort of earning you're going to be able to get as a result of that job, and you can make good decisions based on that. Um, you know, one example that we, we do tend to use, which I'm sure won't affect many of you, um, is the one of, of training airline pilots. That's an enormous cost. But the reality is, <coughs> how many of them actually then go into a position or a job where they can start paying that back? And, and so the stress of having a massive student loan is a pretty uncomfortable feeling. And if you then don't have a job or really any prospects of one in the near future, um, I'm hoping that these sorts of policy changes mean we don't have as many students coming out of the tertiary education system with that level of stress or burden on their shoulders. More questions? Ralph. Thank you, uh, Ralph Springer. I'm from the Extramural Student Society at uh, Mass University. And um, just uh, a quick note that globally, distant, uh, sorry, education is, is becoming more flexible and has been targeted at um, a lifelong event. Okay, so we've got that understanding. However, in New Zealand, the tertiary education strategy is quite focused on completions, efficiency, and therefore youth and internal full-time students. 
There's a group of students, however, who are part-time and for whom access is reducing. The implications of the tertiary education strategy is making institutions focus on the youth and reducing part-time provision. These students are efficient in so much as they have a much lower loan uptake. They don't have access to course costs. How is it that Nationals policies attend and support these students? And I, and I completely understand where you're coming from. 90% um, of my tertiary study was done uh, as a part-time student, um, done while I was working, uh, some of it while I had a family as well. So I fully appreciate the challenges of um, part-time study for adult students um, and the additional challenge of doing it at a distance. I think where the, where the challenge is also is making sure we have a tertiary education system that's flexible enough to cope with the range of students we have. Uh, and I, I don't want to see a system where any group is um, excluded from the opportunity of learning. Um, because I agree with you, I think as a, as a country, we want to make sure that we have lifelong learners. I guess if we go back though and look at um, you know, the challenges of access to education for 18 and 19 and 20 year olds are potentially different from those who are later in life or at different stages of life. So there is you know, clearly a difference in terms of, and if I look at my own personal circumstances, you know, I, I look back and I wish, I just wish that I had stayed at university and completed full-time university straight after school because it would have been a darn sight easier than what I then spread over a decade. So, you know, I think it's really important that we, we can make it as easy as possible for those coming out of the schooling system to enrol and complete tertiary studies. So that's the, that's the first comment I want to make. In terms of making it, uh, continuing to make it accessible for those who are studying as, as adults, and I, I laugh because when I first enrolled in, in part-time study as an adult student, I was only 20 at the time. I didn't feel like an adult. Um, but it's about making sure that the system's still flexible enough to cope with that. If we're looking, for example, at the area of student loans, and we've had some pushback on this, uh, is it fair to expect um, that someone who's 55, who's had you know, quite a period of time earning in the workplace, there would be then an expectation that they would be better able to support themselves while studying than someone who was 18? And if we're to look at what we have as a, as a tertiary education budget or as student loans, we need to make sure that our, that our dollar is going as far as possible and that it's going where it's needed most. So, you know, ideal world, truckloads of money falling from the sky, we'd fund everyone and anybody for as long as they wanted. That is not the reality in the environment we're in. And actually, I don't think it ever will be. So it's how do we support different groups of people, different age groups of people across the tertiary education spectrum and still maintain the access um, for as many as possible. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that we've, we've necessarily got it um, perfect yet, uh, but what we are trying to do is make sure that we've got a better balance than was in place in making sure that we can continue to have interest-free student loans uh, but have those focused and keeping the cost of that in a more manageable way in the future. Uh, Miles. Hi, I'm um, Miles Martin. I'm president of uh, Waikato Institute of Technology in Hamilton. Um, just a couple of questions I have to ask you. And actually, before I ask, um, uh, if we're looking at the VSM and with national supporting VSM, and the outcomes we as students here are represented by our students across all our campuses and we have a voice to speak out on behalf of them. Mm -hmm. um, with passing that bill, did you, did the National Party consider about um, us lobbying against that and lobbying against it and putting some of the students away from the National and voting for the other parties as compared to if the VSM bill didn't go through 
that you probably have the full support of everyone here. That, 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 that was my thought. But my main concern is, with the VSN going in, what does the government have in place to help those students out where we can't kick in? Because we've been downsized on the restriction. Does the government have something in place to help our students out? And secondly, if we look at the Kiwi Saver now, will the government, the government be looking at making Kiwi Saver uh, on compulsory as well? Oh, or, or voluntary to join. Okay. So okay, so so in terms of um, voluntary student yep. volun voluntary student membership or the VSM bill, um, so that was passed clearly. So uh, the numbers were in the house to pass that legislation. Um, I've been a supporter of that. Um, I think it's important that students do have the ability to choose for themselves um, whether they are part of an association. Uh, and one of the things that I've also been very vocal about is my support for associations. Um, I think you do important work and I think you underestimate the value you provide if you think students won't join. And, and I guess that's the, that's the, um, that's the challenge is I don't see I don't see why you see that students won't join your associations given that the services you are providing to them and therefore the value in them. Um, you know, I appreciate the fact that um, because the bill took so much time to progress through the House, um, there were, in my view, quite significantly unnecessary delays. Um, that, that then provides the, the associations with a new challenge in terms of how to get ready in the time frame available. Um, is that ideal? Absolutely not. And um, I, I think you might want to ask a question of perhaps some of the other political parties in front of you today um, as to what solutions they would provide for you given that they were significantly responsible for that delay. Uh, in terms of your question of, of KiwiSaver, uh, we have a scheme at the moment where you um, obviously can opt out if you choose to do so. Uh, and I was on the select committee for uh, the, the VSM piece of legislation. Um, there were a number of options that were discussed in terms of how we could um, you know, come up with a solution that would work. Um, and you know, I, think, I think we came to the right conclusion. In terms of listening to students, um, of course we listen to students. We listen to students as individuals uh, we listen to students as part of associations, um, and as I said at the very start, um, you know, we have the same outcome in mind, but we don't necessarily agree on how we get there. I think you'll say one. Um, just a moment, let me follow up on that. Okay. I've got a question just for a student. Well, I hope you didn't ask the question though, and, and the question was, um, what it, um, the question was, what do you have in place to help students out? Now your answer, um, implied that you don't have anything in place to help students out, nor that you need to. Is that correct? Well, in terms of the, in terms of the legislation, it comes into effect on the 1st of January. No, I'm not talking about legislation, I'm talking about helping students out, which is what the question was. Yep. So in terms of your student associations, your student associations will continue to function. Your students' associations um, support students. So I, I don't see why they need to be helped out. you think that they won't be able to continue to support students. Well, no, the question was, does it do you think the government needs to help them out? Is well, the government helps one? them out significantly already. Okay, okay we're going to move on from there. I've got a question um, from a student uh, from Auckland um, who asks, um, the student debt acts currently as a regressive flat 10% tax on all income above $19,000 for graduates. Yeah. Does that concern you? Um, well, I guess any student uh, debt concerns me, but I guess what you're asking is do we have any suggestions for changing it, and the answer is no. 